interesting to me is we will use AI, as we have been, to specifically target tasks that we need or want done in place of ourselves. That's how AI will ultimately unfold. It is a renaissance. It is a golden age. We are now solving problems with machine learning and artificial intelligence that were, you know, kind of in the realm of science fiction for the last several decades. AI is probably the most important thing humanity has ever worked on. You know, I think of it as something more profound than electricity or fire. And anytime you work with technology, you need to learn to harness the benefits and while minimizing the downsides. Is we're focusing on autonomous systems. And uh, clearly one purpose of autonomous systems is self-driving cars. There are others. Uh, and we sort of see it as the mother of all AI projects. So there's a class of things like game plane or speech recognition or image recognition that the performance levels are phenomenal. You know, if you compare human speech recognition to computer speech recognition, the computer is slightly better. And that's, you know, mind-blowing. Certainly we use AI to do drug discovery. Uh, these biological systems are very complicated. And so the fact that we have you know, vaccines for TB and HIV coming that's partly enabled by this rich data, advance in biology, and machine learning. So when I look at uh, Seeing AI, which is an application we just launched for anybody with visual impairment, they can go download this app that uses the latest cutting edge computer vision technology in our cloud to give anyone the ability to see. And in fact, Angela Mills, who's a colleague of mine, was just telling me about how it's changed her life inside of Microsoft. She can go into our cafeteria, order food using this app with confidence, walk into conference rooms with confidence because she knows she's walking into the right conference room, or what we've done with our OneNote and Word learning tools. Uh, anyone who has dyslexia can now use AI to be able to read better. It, the latest release of Windows 10 has this capability called iGaze, uh, which is something that we learned working with Steve Gleason and the ALS patients, to saying, if you all you have is the eye muscle uh, and the gaze, can we help you type? careful uh, when there's advances. In a sense, we're all better off. If, if the machines can make all the food and the clothes and none of us have to work, uh, you know, you think, okay, now we have all the freedom. If we want to stand behind the, the counter and, you know, make sandwiches, okay, you can if you want, but there's this other way to make those goods and services. But it will be very disruptive uh, because, you know, say you're mid-career, in manufacturing or driving, then it's a disruption. Now we've had that in a slow way for hundreds of years. You know, we used to all be farmers, now very few of us are farmers. I said, it's right to be concerned, absolutely. You have to worry about it, otherwise you're not gonna solve it, right? And it's important to understand tomorrow whether Google is there or not, you know, artificial intelligence is going to progress. Uh, you know, technology has uh, this nature, it's, uh, you know, it's going to evolve. I think pulling back, history shows pulling back, countries which pull back don't do well with the change. We know that. 20, 30 years ago, you educated yourself and that carried you through for the rest of your life. That is not going to be true for the generation which is being born now. They have to learn continuously over their lives. We know that. So we have to transform how we do education. Look, I think, I mean, you nailed it. Anything that's repetitive and done you know, on the back of, you know, technology or, you know, is going to be fundamentally vulnerable. Yeah. So I think uh, technology, and in particular AI, can in fact bring more empowerment, more inclusiveness. And at the same time, we should be clear-eyed about displacement, clear-eyed about unintended consequences like any other technology, and work both skilling so that, you know, people can find the jobs of the future, create new jobs, and uh, lastly, uh, I think, have a set of policy decisions uh, that really help people uh, at, as they go through this change. But the risks are uh, important, and I think the way we solve it is we think ahead, we worry about it, we do things like from, from be upfront, 
uh, you know, have ethical charters, think about AI safety from day one, be very transparent and open in how we pursue progress there, and figure out global frameworks by which we can engage. Just like Paris Agreement and climate change, you know, using forums like this, I think we bring people together to engage on the hard questions. And I think answers will emerge. Um, you know, I, I have exposure to the very, the very most cutting edge um, AI. Um, uh, and I think people should be really concerned about it. Um, I keep so sounding the alarm bell, but you know, until people see like robots going down the street killing people, like they don't know how to react, you know, because it seems so ethereal. Um, and um, I think we should be really concerned about AI. And I think we should. This is, AI is a rare case where I think we need to be proactive in regulation instead of reactive. Um, because I think by the time we are reactive in AI regulation, it's too late. Right now we have machine learning algorithms that can solve an incredibly complex problem beyond any human intelligence, but they're essentially complete idiots and like two-year-olds and anything that's not that problem. They're dumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're in the, like they, you can give them this enormous data set and they come up with brilliant correlations and insights, but they're not going to plug into Skynet and you know, right. Like, right. Like, like, like threaten us anytime soon. So I'm quite optimistic and uh, I don't think artificial intelligence is a threat. I don't think artificial intelligence is something terrible, but human beings are smart enough to learn that. <laughs>